This is the Samsung Galaxy A25 5G disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a look at the SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate with either a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the plastic back plate. Now the camera bezel needs to be removed. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off, so you won't need to take apart the phone to replace those. At this point, there are 15 Phillips screws that have to be removed. The flex cable for the fingerprint scanner can now be disconnected. Now a plastic pry tool needs to be ran between the back housing and the frame of the screen to pop off the catches. The back housing is also made of plastic. The NFC antenna is located here, as well as numerous antenna flex cables around the back housing. Looking at the other side, we can see additional antenna flex cables on the top, some graphite film to help transfer heat, and the bottom speaker assembly located here. At this point, the battery cable can be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard as well as the screen cable. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws in the back housing, you'd have to disconnect the flex cable connecting the screen cable to the main board, and then you'd pry off the screen cable from the subboard, flip the phone over, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the whole screen off, apply new adhesive, Reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe and reassemble the phone. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board which can be disconnected by just popping them off. Now there's a single Phillips screw holding down the main board. Looking at the main board, there's an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 50 megapixel primary, and the 2 megapixel macro lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's an LED flash located here, and there are rubber gaskets around the connectors. So again, when it comes to this phone and the Galaxy A15, I'm not really sure why they have rubber gaskets around the connectors, because the SIM tray itself and the openings on the phone don't really have any sort of protection from keeping any water or debris from getting in. So these rubber gaskets seem sort of pointless. Looking at the other side, we can see a 13 megapixel front facing camera, a secondary microphone located next to that, a light sensor below that, and the SIM and memory card reader located here. There's also a graphite pad over the back shields to help transfer heat. Now that the graphite pad or film has been peeled back, we see a thermal pad which is seated on top of the processor, as well as one which is seated on top of this chip, and another one on this one. Here's a better look at the processor. Now to remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off.
Here's a look at the 5000 mAh battery. There's a single Phillips screw that's holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we can see a headphone jack located here and the charger ports located here. On the other side, we can see the primary microphone. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held on with some adhesive. So if you needed to replace that, you just have to apply some heat and gently pry it off. Once the battery adhesive pouch has been peeled back, as well as this film, we can see a copper heat pipe which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. And the copper heat pipe helps to transfer heat. One more thing I want to mention for those of you who are worried if you accidentally inserted the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, which would be the microphone hole. On this phone you won't need to worry since both the microphone and the filter are both seated above the hole, so they won't be damaged. Moving on, the flex cable for the volume keys is located here. If you need to replace that, you have to just gently peel it off. And the same goes for the earpiece speaker which is located on top. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back together, apply new adhesive and reapply the backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.